Show your process. Well, first I draw this head, then I erase some of the more detailed features, and one, two, three, a circle the thingy, 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 thingy. Give me that. Hello, everybody. We're going to go over the 2D animation pipeline today. This presentation that we've put together, we put it together with the idea that people who haven't worked in the industry or haven't worked in the industry for very long, that know very little about the way animation works, that it hopefully will be a broad overview for those folks. So this slide is your broad overview of the pipeline. We're going to start at the place that we have a final script. So we're not going to talk about how we get here. We're just going to say we have a final script. There are three different tracks in the pipeline that happen at one time, basically, simultaneously. So let's start, though, with talking about what we do with the design team. So with the design team, when we have a final script, we create what's called a breakdown. We break down everything that we're going to need to design for that episode. We usually start with pre-design. And so pre-design would be rough drawings, like rough line art that we then feed to the storyboard artists. So the storyboard artists, they need to know what things look like, right? If they're going to visualize the script into their drawings that they create. And then we move from pre-design into designing kind of everything else that we determined we needed from that breakdown. And so at the same time, your storyboard artists and your director, they're doing their sort of own breakdown. They're breaking down what kind of shots they want, what type of compositions, like, you know, what type of action. If there's portions of the script that maybe they want a plus for comedy or whatever, they're figuring that all out. And what we call storyboard roughs. So after the rust phase, the director, the producers, they make notes, we go to cleans. And then those cleans go to our editor, our animatic editor, who then edits together a timeline of those drawings so you can see them play in real time. Going back to the design team, we need that animatic and we need to be able to review it because like we broke down the script at the beginning, we're now gonna break down the animatic and make sure that some of the designs that we've been drawing, we've been working on, haven't been omitted or that things haven't been added. So if things have been omitted, we stop working on them. If things have been added, we start working on them. So we move from the rough designs into final clean drawings, which is literally just really beautiful like line art. And then from there, we move into color or BG paint. So color styling is for the characters and the props. And then BG paint is obviously for the backgrounds. And then once we reach our final color, we send that down to checking is an old term. It comes from like the old days of when we actually were doing animation on cells. And it was usually like people who were very detail oriented. They probably were directors at some point, but maybe were getting like close to retiring, but still Still wanted to be a part of the industry. So they would literally review the storyboards that you had, the designs. Nowadays, that sort of quote checking is done through our breakdowns and is done through a collaborative process with production people. So your production assistant, your production coordinators, your directors, your art directors. So it's not just like so heavily reliant upon like one person and their ability to be detail oriented. And then we get to final animatic just through iterating with the director and storyboard revisionists. After we watch the animatic play through, there may be notes from executives and things like that. And so we just keep iterating until we reach what we think is great and the final product we want to keep producing. Let's go back to casting. So those two things are happening while casting is doing their version of the script breakdown. So they're breaking it down now though for voices and then they're going out to talent agencies and they're asking for auditions so that we can determine who we want to cast in those voices and then we're going to record and then the dialogue is being edited by dialogue editors because in our normal speech patterns we tend to make like clicking like kind of noises or smacking noises with our mouths like when we open them. And so dialogue editing is going to take all those sort of imperfections out and make it sound really great. So timers, they used to literally time out like every frame of action, like every frame of speech. That's not something that we do so much anymore because we have animatics. 
So that's kind of also, sometimes you may do it on like a very traditional pipeline, but usually we have animatics now, so we don't normally do that anymore. So your dialogue exposed X sheets, which again, we'll talk about, and those timing sheets, they then go into like a final X sheet, which then would go to the checker, which again has been integrated into more of a production collaborative process. So once you get all those things together and all those materials are completed, then we go to the final materials shipping to our vendor studio. And the vendor studio, they're normally responsible for the like physical animation. So physically animating, whether it's in harmony. If it is in harmony, they're going to be building rigs like you would in a CG show, kind of comparatively. And then the materials come back to us at Nickelodeon for the post-production process. So I was talking about the black and white clean art. So this is an example of that, right? This is a character turn. And in this character turn, because this is a harmony show, we need to show every angle of this character so they can build the rig. And the rigs in a harmony or flash show are a bunch of drawings that we've put together. Like they may be a bunch of like hand poses or a bunch of like facial expressions that we can actually animate in between. And so it just makes the animation process a little bit faster because you don't have to like redraw everything all the time. You have a library of stuff you can pull from. And you'll see with this drawing, Ronnie Ann, she has some expressions here. Like you're seeing a bit of her personality coming through. And that's really important. That's really helpful for the animators to know how to actually animate her, like how her physicality is, how she moves, what her mannerisms are. So our black and white designers, they'll create this. And then from there, it goes to color. And so here's an example of what Ronnie Ann looks like on this subway. You would have, or you could have, multiple color designs for everything, every asset, every character, every prop, every vehicle, every background per episode. And it would depend on if your lighting was changing. You need to send this for the vendor studio to know how they should color it. And that's one thing that I always tell people when we're talking about pipeline is you have talked about this process. You've talked about these characters. You've talked about who they are and what they look like and what they do for months or years. And your vendor studio, the only thing they know is what you sent them in the drawings. They haven't seen anything or heard anything. All they know is what they see in this right now. So if you don't tell them or you don't show them in your designs, they're not going to know. You can see there's a bottom of his shoe here. And that's important because if you didn't show them the bottom of the shoe, the vendor studio, they wouldn't know what it looked like. They wouldn't know how to draw it. So you want to make sure you show them everything they need to know. And here you can see that this guy's like sassy and cool and suave, Bobby. So you can see him kind of with his pose and you can see his posture is different than Ronnie Ann's was. And because again, that's just what his personality is like. And then I'm going to show you some props. So with 2D, a lot of times you don't actually have to get this detailed as this prop design is. Because if you draw from like a three-quarter front, a three-quarter back, three-quarter top, three-quarter bottom, usually people can figure it out, right? But because this is a harmony show, we did a lot more views of it because, again, they needed to know what the different angles look like to build the rig. It's also super important is scale reference. So you want to compare that particular prop or background to a person. So in this case, this is Ronnie Ann's skateboard. So we're comparing it to Ronnie Ann. Backgrounds, a lot of times what we do for these internally, we'll do the broadest view possible to give the vendor studio as much information as possible. And normally as our partner, they will then create some of the backgrounds on their own. So we want to try to give them a really, really wide view and pretty like detailed, pretty high res. Like we may give them like a 2K or a 4K drawing so that they can then push in and use this same broad background, let's say, for a shot on the stage steps there at the front of the house. And then here's going to be the color for that. And this is just your standard day. If we had a nighttime scene, again, we would do it in night, a night version or a sunset version or whatever, depending on the time of day. Here's interior. So this is interior of their house. You can see in the few drawings that I have, it's giving them quite a bit of information. So this is the same living room. You can see the TV free and left, right? And this drawing is the same TV as here, right? And so if we provide them with enough, and them being, again, the vendor studio, with enough views, they can figure out the rest. So we also have some effects drawings. So these are pretty simple with effects just because of the style of the show. 
We sometimes would use some software called After Effects where we could create more detailed kind of particle-y looking effects. We may use Maya to create some as well if that was what the style of the show required. In this case, with this cloud of dust, probably people are fighting beneath that. We would probably just have it in the storyboards, just draw it rotating kind of like or undulating kind of like the cloud moving that you could see that stuff was happening. And then based on this drawing and what was in the boards, the vendor studio can figure out how to animate it. If it was more complicated, we may send a video reference of something we really liked that was in another episode or some kind of reference from YouTube. Sometimes we'll even send things that we like and we'll say, do it like this. So we're going to look at an animatic, just the boards put together. You're going to hear dialogue. You're going to see, though, that the animatic, the drawings, they're not animated. It's not animation. There are simple poses. We'll, we'll call them key poses, right? So you've got your key poses that the storyboard artists have hit, and it is the vendor studio's responsibility to then, with the designs we provided and these storyboards and animatic, to draw all the in-betweens. And those are industry terms, right? So your key poses, your in-betweens, it's the vendor studio's responsibility to clean up the key poses and then draw the in-between so that we get the full life of the animation. So what we're seeing right now is what we, as the pre-production studio, have created as reference for the vendor studio. Rosa, you shrunk my shirt. That's Carl's shirt, tonto. <sighs> You can see some of what I've been talking about, right? So you can see that they kind of snap from pose to pose. There's no, again, the word in-betweens. You're not seeing the full animation because this is storyboards. This is not the final animation that the vendor studio will then create for us. And you're also not seeing what we call lip flap or lip sync. That's it, fuera. Everybody out of my kitchen or dinner will never be ready. You too, Sergio. Ah oh, man, that was a limited time offer. See, his mouth didn't move at all right during those lines, which the vendor studio would animate his mouth. I mean, in this case, he's a bird, so probably just up and down. But if you were a human or some other kind of creature that has actual facial expressions and a mouth that can actually animate, in order to inform the vendor studio of how to do that, we would send them a mouth chart. This is from Rocker's Modern Life. So you're seeing there's letters underneath here, right? You've got A, B, 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 C, D, right? E, F, G, and H. So those are just the name of that pose. That is not the letter or the phenome is what we call it, that corresponds to that particular expression. And let's look at V, say the letter V. And you can tell that your mouth kind of comes together, your teeth do kind of press on your bottom lip when you say that V. So what we do is we draw an expression or a phenome for each letter or each vowel of the English language. And then on the X sheets, we would then write out which of these mouth charts. So you would just literally write like the letter C if you wanted to say A, right? And you would write the number of frames that you would do that for. And then you would write every single letter that corresponds to a sound so that then the editor studio would know how to animate to the lip flap, the lip flap to the actual dialogue. And that sounds like really complicated, but it's really important because sometimes our vendor studios may not be in countries where English was their first language, or I've even worked with vendor studios who they don't speak English at all. So this is so important for them to be able to actually animate to the dialogue we've recorded and sent them for them to be able to animate the expressions and the lip flap and everything that people would say and use in the English language. This is an X sheet that corresponds to Rocco's Modern Life and corresponds to those expressions we just were looking at. So what you can see here is literally you've got like five. So the first five frames, they're doing whatever B is, right? So whatever B corresponds to, they're doing that for five frames. And so you'll see, right, they write it all out here in this weird code that seems to make no sense, but it made sense to the animators. We have animatics now that show timing of camera moves, but back in the day, you used to see continue truck in. So continue pushing the camera in, continue pan. And you see there's a little arrow here to the right. Let's continue the camera panning to screen right. So even though we don't use these anymore, most projects, especially in season one, will create some kind of mouth charts. And then also expressions that show what this guy Filbert looks like when he's saying the M sound when he's angry or when he's happy. 
Usually we have like a neutral, a happy, a sad, an angry. We'll have multiple different facial expressions that correspond to their emotion when they're saying these sounds, these syllables. Oh, that's so beautiful. We then ship all that stuff to the vendor studio. They review it. They hopefully ask us questions for clarity. They hopefully understand it. Hopefully we don't need to send them supplemental stuff, but maybe we do. Maybe there's stuff that doesn't make sense. Maybe they're missing things. Whatever happens in their dialogue with them, they then go off and do their jobs. In the case of Casa Grandes, they would build rigs and then they would set up scene files where they bring all the rigs into the Harmony file. And then they would do their camera moves. So they try to recreate the boards. They'd recreate the action. So the sort of blocking of the characters, it's the movement of the characters, the placement of them within the frame. And then they would start animating. And some Harmony projects, sometimes our flash projects can look what we call puppeted. And part of that is like the vendor studio hasn't done enough in between the key poses in between frames. And so you'll see like characters snapping from like a straight on to a side in your own body. When you turn your head, there's obviously like a path of motion in between this. So straight on and then turning your head to the side. You don't just move from here to here. There is like a smooth motion, right? And so the vendor studio, they'll add all the stuff that makes it look like a smooth motion. If they don't do that, and it does just snap because you can use the technology to blend from like this pose to this pose, then that's what we call puppeted. It just looks a little like less finessed, but sometimes that happens. Sometimes that's the style of the show, or sometimes that's just the amount of time they had to work on it. The color usually in the Harmony rigs is already there. It's built in. If it were traditional animation, they would draw black and white drawings and then they would have their like ink and painters. So their painters would go and paint it, put all the layers together. So that in this case, the Harmony show, you would already have the color ink. Once they're done doing their stuff, they send it back to us. And we call those take ones. So we get the shots back and those go to our editor. And so here's where the pipeline kind of branches again. We've got a few paths happening here now in post-production as well. But everything hinges on getting the take ones and the editor receiving them and putting them together in a cut and making sure the timing's good, that it plays well and it's clear. If it's not, or if there's some animation that's less than desirable or assets are wrong, designs are wrong, whatever, we will call retakes. And so you can see the little arrows between editor and retakes in the top left corner. That's the vendor studio sending us revisions and us calling for revisions back and forth. And depending on how much time you have in your schedule or what your budget is, that could happen once, that could happen twice, that could happen seven times. It just depends in terms of time and money. So once we get a first cut of the picture, so that first cut goes to our dialogue editor, our composer, and our sound effects. So the dialogue editor, we then do what we call an ADR spot. So ADR is maybe during animatic, we changed a line after our initial record. Maybe we decided that we thought a different line of dialogue would be funnier, or maybe we added a line, or maybe we just decided we really didn't like the read, the way that line was performed, and we want to re-record it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spot for the things we need to still record or the things we want to re-record, and then we will go do that. So then we'll go record them, and then our dialogue editors will edit those, like they did before for the pops and the clicks and the whatever weird brand and stuff. So the composer, we do a music spot. So that is the same thing. We watch the picture, that first cut, we watch it and we determine where we want music. Is there source sound? Do you hear a TV in the background that's playing music or a radio? Or is it wall to wall composition? Like, do you hear music the entire time? Is it just supportive music with certain music cues here and there? Does the music plus the comedy, is, does it sound funny? Does it sound silly? So we talk about all these things. Is it big? Is it little? Is it just like a small little instrumental? And that's determined between your creatives and your creative producers and your composer at the spot. And then the composer goes and creates the music. There is some back and forth with notes and things there that happen. So then you have your sound effects house and the sound effects spotting. So that is the sound of a door closing or someone being punched. So whatever you need that wouldn't have been recorded by a person saying something, making a noise, even if it's a grunt or a laugh or a giggle or a line of dialogue. So we do the sound effects spot where we determine what sound effects we need 
the sound effects house actually produces those. Sometimes they have a library of stuff they can use. Other times they need to make those. We then do some reviews on that to make sure we like those. We like the placement of them. And so once we're done with all three of those things, that gets sent then to our mix house, which we're going to pause there for a second. And I'm going to go back up to where it says after effects spotting. So those are visual effects. And sometimes you're really fortunate and you have a visual effects artist that works with you in-house. You can call for the plussing of the visual effects in the actual picture. And so if you decide like that basic cloud drawn I showed you earlier, you want that to be like particle effects or glowing or whatever, something else added on top of it, the after effects person can do that. So we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll look at the picture, we'll spot for where we want more effects added or effects revised effects plus that artist goes and does their magic and we review them and then we file them and at the same time we're putting together the credits so all that's being compiled and designed and put together and approved and making sure we have all the names in there right and all the titles and things like that and so once we have the credits and the timing of that and we have the final audio and the music and the sound effects we are able to lock the picture so once we have picture lock and we have all the components that are in TL, the credits, the recording, the final music, the sound effects, the effects, and the picture lock, we send all those things to the mix house. You've been putting your blood, sweat, and tears into a project for longer than you can remember at this point. And you've seen the thing in bits and pieces. You've seen the designs. You've seen the animatic. You've heard the music separate from the picture. Like you haven't seen it all together yet. And so the mix is the first time that all these things that you've been working on, all the components that your whole team, you know, has worked so hard on and has dedicated themselves to, you see them all come together. Kids, they grow up so fast. And then you have after mix where we level the dialogue. So sometimes music is too loud and it's underneath dialogue. So you want to make sure you can hear what all the characters are saying. Sometimes you want a music cue to be louder. So we basically just go through and balance everything. So once we're done there, some shows do color correction, some don't. And that's just could be balancing of color or adding vignettes, which are just kind of like a dark shadow around the edges to direct your attention to something in the middle of the screen. And then we go to online, which is the last time we see the project before it goes to QC and closed captioning. And it's kind of our last opportunity to fix anything that may be broken or missing. So once online's done, then again, QC, closed captioning, and then we deliver, whether it's a network or a streaming service. And that's the first time, yeah, that it's actualized. Like why we do what we do, right? This is going to be storyboards and final pictures. So you can see how what we did as the, pre-production studio and then what the vendor studio did during their portion of the pipeline and you're going to be able to also hear like sound effects and music and things like that so you'll see what we then did in post two how it all comes together ah, i am obsessed with those tamales i dreamt about them all night <gasps> well i can't find out or we're rat bait we need a plan i'm one step ahead of you i mapped out abuela's schedule she's got cooking from seven to eight building repairs from ten to two and laundry from three to four She'll be the most distracted during the repairs. So that's when we hit the truck. Nice planning, sweetie. She gets that from me. <laughs> and sometimes it's amazing because sometimes you're like, I didn't think that this was gonna be a funny episode. I've seen it 50 billion times, it's not funny anymore. But then when it comes together with the sound effects and the music, it's funny again. And it's just super rewarding and I love it. So then we're basically done. Ah, I did it now! 